for class 6 bio uh, the chapter's name is cell the first thing that you need to know is the definition of the cell what is cell okay so according to the definition a cell is the basic unit of life Therefore, cells are called the structural and functional units of an organism. Okay, so previously, when we studied chemistry, we talked about atoms, right? How atoms are the building blocks of elements. So they are the tiny particles which come together and they make elements. Similarly, cells they make life. Okay, or they make life forms. They come together and they make life forms. Okay, they are the structural and functional units. Remember these two words, these two words are very important. What does structural mean? It means that it gives us structure to the body. For example, the cells of our bones, they become the whole uh, skeleton structure of a body which defines how we look, okay? And functional is uh, the cells of different organs of a body has their own functions according to the organs they are part of. Okay, like for example, cells of a heart helps the heart perform better. So they have their own function. When were cells discovered? See, we know that, now we know that we had cells. Okay, small particles which come together and they make, to turn into tissues and tissues, they come together and they make organs. Okay, so we know about it. But when did we come to know that we have such a thing called cells? It was right after the microscope. Just... Think about it, it's a tiny object, very very tiny thing. So how do you see it with your naked eye when you can't see it normally? You need a microscope. So the moment or after the microscope was invented, okay, people found out there were smaller units there and they call them cells. What we need to know about is cell theory. Okay, so the cell theory has three important parts. So you need to memorize these three parts. The first part is all living organisms are made up of one or many cells. Okay, every living organism, let it be animals, humans, plants, they are made up of one or more cells. Second is, cell is the structural and fundamental unit of any functional living organism. We have already talked about this, how cells in turn give us structure and they provide functions to different organs in a body. So cell is the structural and fundamental very important unit of a living organism and the last one new cells arise from the older cells by division okay so we don't have a factory in a body which keeps on making new cells what happens is you have a cell and that cell gets divided into newer cells okay the older cell gets divided and becomes newer cells you can learn in detail about this when we go to the processes called mitosis and meiosis. Uh, we talked about how every organism is made out of one or more than one cells, right? If an organism is made out of one cell, then it is known as unicellular organisms, okay? Uni means one, cellular means made out of cells. So, unicellular organisms, an organism that is made out of a single cell is called unicellular organisms. We have already talked about that. And the examples are amoeba, paramecium, yeast, bacteria, and euglena. And the next is multicellular. Multi means more than one, two or more. Multicellular organisms are an organism made up of many cells. It's called multicellular organisms. Like discussed, two or more cells. Examples of multicellular organisms are plants, animals, including us as human beings. Now let's talk about different types of cells in animals. So the first type of cell that we have is a nerve cell. Okay, nerve cell has a head and has an elongated body. Okay, they, they have an elongated body because they need to carry information, messages from our brain to different part of the body and from the different part of the body to our brains. Okay, the definition is given there. A nerve cells are elongated as they need to carry messages to different parts of our body. Now we have muscle cells. Okay, muscle cells, there are different different kinds of muscle cells. Like we have skeletal muscles which make up the skeletal bone. We have cardiac muscles which are which make our heart muscles and the smooth muscles which are there in the body. Okay, now these muscles are made out of muscle cells. 
they help in movement of a body, they give a structure and uh, when there is a, con a contraction and relaxation, we can move our body. Like for example, when we move our arm, okay, so there is a con contraction of muscle there. So when we move our arm, we make it tighter, we can feel there is a tight bundle of muscle there and we call it biceps. Right? So that is basically contraction and when you release it, it becomes softer. Right? The muscles relaxes. So the movement occurs when there is a contraction and relaxation of muscles. Now the most important cells in a body or the largest collection of cells in a body is the skin cells. Skin cells, what they do is they provide us with protection. The most important thing is protection of the body. The definition states that skin cells have large surface area for protecting the body as we have discussed it covers the basically it covers the largest area in animal body and it provides us with protection from heat cold dust and so many other things now another type of cells is uh, the cells they make which make up the blood like for example the white blood cells which help us fight diseases they are our fighters of a body, the red blood cells which provides the body with food and oxygen and the platelets which helps the body to heal. Okay, If you have a wound, if you have a cut and when that thing needs to heal, platelets help that. When your body needs food, a certain part of your body needs oxygen or you know food, it needs to form for the performance then Red blood cells provide that and white blood cells fights all this uh, bacteria and viruses that enter our body to keep us safe internally. Externally we have skin and internally we have white blood cells. According to definitions, white blood cells help to fight against germs in the body. Red blood cells help to transport food and oxygen to different parts of the body and platelets are tiny blood cells that help you help your body from clots to stop bleeding. So another type of cell that we have is the sperm cell. Okay, sperm cells need to swim long distances. That's why this they have this tail. Okay, this tail acts as a propeller which propels them, it pushes them forward. They move uh, with the help of a tail, just like the fishes. Have you seen the fish? The tail they move the tail and they move forward. Similarly, the sperm cells move that. Now let's move on to the cells in plants. Cells in plants are of different shapes. They are either hexagonal, rectangular or spherical depending on their functions. Okay, whatever the functions are, based on the functions, the shapes differ. Now, let's talk about different sizes of cells or different cell sizes. Okay, so we have already talked about how cells cannot be seen by the naked eye. You need a microscope to see the cells okay so why do you need microscope because they're very very tiny and let's see how tiny they are micron or micrometer is a unit of measurement for cells okay now let's understand what is one micron how much is one micron one micron or one micrometer is equal to one millionth of a meter or one thousand of a millimeter okay now what does it mean? It means if you have a millimeter, okay, a millimeter will be very tiny. Okay, now if you have a millimeter that's very tiny, you divide that millimeter in thousand pieces, equal pieces. Now, one part of it would be the size of the cell. Okay, I'll give you a visual representation after this in the next slide so you can understand how big that is. Now, before I go there, there is one thing I want you to just uh, remember, okay, it's just for your general knowledge that mycoplasma is a species of bacteria which is known as the smallest organism in the planet. Now, this is the visual representation of how big a microbe is. Okay, that would be the size of a hair follicle. That would be the size of a hair follicle, diameter wise, and that would be the size of a, uh, a cell. You can just compare it. This would be 25 
microns, this is 10 microns, and this is 1 to 5 microns, and that would be the size of a cell. How big the cell is. If that is the size of the hair, our hair, if that is how big our hair is, then that would be the size of one cell. Now let's move on to the structure of a cell. Okay? Cell is made out of different parts. Now let's talk about these different parts. Now the first thing is cell organelle. A small organelle-like structure present inside the cell is called cell organ. It has a particular structural makeup and performs a specific function. Okay, and we can study about this later. Here we have a diagram for an animal cell and a plant cell. Okay, now both of these cells have somewhat similar things, okay, similar parts and the functions are also similar and if you can see I've underlined certain things Right? Because these things are important for you to understand. The first thing is cell wall. Okay, a cell is covered by this thing. Okay, it acts as a, a circumference or a peripheral protection for the cell, and the cell that's the primary protection for a cell. And the second layer of secondary layer of protection would be the cell membrane. Okay. Now next is vacuole. Vacuole is a space in plant cell. Animal cells might have it, might not have it. Most of the time, animal cells don't have vacuoles. Okay, most of the times. There have been instances, in some cases, in some animals that we have found vacuoles, but in the majority of the case, we don't find vacuoles in animal cells. Okay, a cell has a nucleus, which is the center of the cell. Okay, doesn't have to be in the center, but it is the main unit of the cell and we have cytoplasm. Now let's look at this table. This table tells us the difference between the plant cell and an animal cell. The cell wall, which acts as a layer of protection, okay, is present in plant cell, but is absent in animal cell. The nucleus is present at the edge of the cell. It's not at the center for the plant. Okay, it's around the edge, but for animal cell, it is there around the center. The vacuoles, it's present in the plants, but it may or may not be present in animals. Even if it's present, it's going to be very, very small, not as big as how it is in the plant cell. The plastids or the chloroplast, this thing gives the color, the green color to the plants. So, plants have it, animals don't. Centrosome is absent in plant cell and it is present in animal cell. And lysosome is absent in plant cell and present in animal cell. These two, centrosome and lysosomes, are present in our plant. Now, let's move on to cell division. Okay, we talk about how cells divide. Okay. The older cells they divide into two newer cells. So why does this process happen? The cell division is a process by which a parent cell divides into two or more daughter cells. Cell division usually occurs as part of a larger cell cycle. Okay, so we talked about how an older cell, that is a parent cell, gets divided into two newer cells, those are the daughter cells. And why does this happen? Because Lifespan of a cell is not very long. Okay, there are certain cells in a body which has longer life uh, lifespan. For example, cells in our brain. Okay, but when it comes to certain parts of a body, for example, our skin, the lifespan of the cells on our skin is very very less. So, when those cells die, what happens? The newer cells come up there. We need cells for protection. We need this. We need cell division for growth. We need cell division for healing. Okay? So, and we need cell division so that those cells which die off can be replaced by newer cells. So, cell division has two major processes. One is mitosis and another one is meiosis. In mitosis, what happens is when a cell divides, okay, into a parent cell gets divided into daughter cells, 
the genetic material gets duplicated okay the copy of the genetic material of the parent cell gets put in both of the daughter cells okay but in meiosis what happens is the genetic material gets divided into two different parts okay remember again in mitosis genetic material of the cell is um, duplicated but in meiosis the genetic material of the cell is divided okay now cell division is important for the following reasons why cell divisions are important we have already discussed it is for growth it is for replacing dead and damaged cells and it is for reproduction thank you and that's all you can get the notes out there in the school website please download it please go through it and 